Welcome to my clubhouse. My name is Sally Cologne, and I'm really, really excited for this guest today. I know I'm always excited, but this one is different because she is the creator and CEO of Designing Genius. She is the world's new chief behavior officer, and she's been featured on Oprah Winfrey, Steve Harvey, and Dr. Phil. Please help me welcome Miss Amelia Antonetti. Girl, I am so excited that you are here. Because I hear you all the time on Clubhouse. You're in Breakfast with Champions. <laughs> I am. And you're such a, you're just brilliant the way your mind oh. works. Thank you. I, I, I think I texted to you, this to you once, but you know, our mutual friend Tim Story. Oh, I feel like you're like the I female love version of I love Tim Story. I love, I, and I've heard that a couple of times. Yeah. They're like, are you and Tim like related or whatever? And I'm like, no, no, I wish I was. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah, I love Tim. So for those that don't understand what a, what a behaviorist is, can you explain what it is? Sure. I'm not a therapist. I can okay. tell you right now. Start there. If you're looking for a warm, <laughs> nice kind of hug kind of thing, no. So a behaviorist basically is a mirror of your current thought state and your current behaviors. Mm. And it allows you to know where that's going to end up, right? And then it gives you quick uh, behavior modification tools if you want to redirect. But more importantly, it's an immediate mirror. So I don't ask you how you think or how you feel. I mirror back what is. So how would you do that with me? So, I mean, we'll probably do it as we have this conversation. So okay. that what I'll do is I will mirror what you just said so that you can understand where that's going to lead you. And then for you to go, well, wait a minute, it's not actually, that's not what I wanted, right? And so I do this a lot of times between parents and children, especially uh, high schoolers and getting ready for, you know, going to college. Oh, you've heard me do this on Clubhouse mm -hmm. a thousand times. We yeah. do live sessions on Clubhouse. Um, and that's exactly what I do. I mirror back for them what they're actually saying so they can actually see their thoughts mm. and then say, okay, let me, let me walk you through how this movie is going to end so that somebody can say, well, I want a different outcome. And so everything, everything mm -hmm. between where you are and where you want to go, even though people think it's time, it's money, it's resources, it's not, it's, not. it's a behavior. It's an absolute behavior. And so I do these shifts all the time for people so they can understand why life is the way it is, right. right? Because what people don't understand about behavior is if you want something different, like if you're totally happy with the way things are, yeah. repeat, rinse and repeat. Right. But if you want something different, then you have to lean into who you're becoming, right? The future self. Yes. Well, the minute you start becoming your future self, your current self panics, panics, wow. right? Because they're like, wait, and, wait, 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 wait. And is that when people go back to what's comfortable? Well, they don't even get going. Right. Because the minute I say, okay, you, whatever, this is what you want. Right. In order for this is what you want. This is the behavior that you're going to have to adopt. Who you are right now starts to white knuckle going, oh, I'm going to double down here. I don't want, the, mm. I'm afraid. Right. And so you have to push through your current thought state to become your next future self, knowing that there's nothing but resistance. You have to move through the resistance right. to get to the future self. So what gets people through the resistance. Well, that's why most people don't. Okay. If what you want to know why, why there's 2% yes. of those people in the world, right? Right. The reason is, is because they've built a relationship with resistance. Most individuals yeah. think when they feel resistance energy, there's something wrong. Right. And I'm like, mm, but you're growing. But you're growing. Okay. So, so, okay. 80% of people or Stop. 80. They quit. Right. Okay. Quit. So the 20% of people, why are they different? Because of the relationship with thoughts tied to actions, right? Tied to rinse and repeat by measurables, right? So the success formula is, and it doesn't matter what book you read, it doesn't matter, right? So right. success is 50% in the thinking, 25% in the planning, and then 25% in the execution. Most people get a great idea and start to execute. Well, you miss 75% of the formula. Right. We're not taught how to think. Mm. More importantly, we shove things into our day, right. right? I always say, show me your calendar. I'll show you what your bank account looks like, right? Because you wait, <laughs> wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Cause that's a big statement. Yeah. Why? If you're living with a to-do list, you're broke. If you, if your calendar, hang on, <laughs> hang on. You can't just say that and then keep going. Okay. Yeah, but it's a, it is, if it is. you live with a to-do list, that means you're broke. Explain sure. that. Because most people have a to-do list, right? And they are just adding to the list. Is the list in priority order? No. Is the list in highest and best use? No. Is the list in most margin? No. It's not none of it. It's just a stupid list. And so the thing that you actually should be doing is number 22 on the list, and you're working from the top down. 
It is no, no successful people have a to-do list. Broke people have a to-do list. Okay, all right. So let's, I, I feel like we just need to take a minute. <laughs> so instead of a to-do list, what's the opposite of that? Highest and best use, right? Highest and what is, you have to first go through your identity yes. to understand what is your highest, what is the thing that you do better than anybody else and you time block that right? You time block that efficiency. Then you align your time blocking, right? So every thing that falls within only you can do it like right. this, only you can do this, yeah. right? You block those for a beginning, a middle and an end. And so now yep. you have a beginning, a middle and end yep. so that your highest and best use is blocked mm. for time, energy, and impact. Right, you wouldn't do this all day because no. then the last show is not as good as the first show. But if you time block, I'm going to do this in an hour. Yeah. This is, and then I'm going to recoup, right? So it's energy out and then re-energy back in, right? Re-amplifying yeah. that energy to fill yeah. back up your cup. It. So I have time blocks in my highest and best use. I also have my highest and best use based on my power hour versus my protective hour. I do the things that are not hard for me to do. Mm -hmm during my protective hours yeah. because it's not something I have to think about. But yeah. the things where I really have to focus and I have to be in, impactful, yeah. like performers or investments or whatever like that, I do that during my power hours, right? And so we have a bad relationship with time and then people wonder why they're not effective because yeah. you weren't taught to be effective. Okay, I have to say something because I have this visual. Sometimes I get downloads, especially when I'm around people like you. Okay, I'm having a download. So Andy, my executive producer, is in the other studio. He has this, you remember I Dream of Jeannie? Oh yeah, of course. Okay, yeah. so he has the actual bottle. That's like a replica of the actual bottle from the movie, right? Or from the TV yeah. show. My mind is saying, wouldn't it be amazing if I can put Amelia into that bottle, right? And then whenever I, I'm going through something or I need you know, to talk about something, I can pop the bottle open and go, Amelia, what do I do about this situation? Mm -hmm. I was just talking about this with Jerry Malcolm. Oh yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he has Grant who is kind of like that mentor yeah. that whenever Jerry says something that Grant can correct him and say, no, say yep. that again. What you just said is not yep. helping you. It's not serving you. And I, t and I said to him on the show, I want a friend that I can have that could be with me. Obviously, you can't be with me every day. Yeah. But we, but we, you know, we could be, we could be my friend. You could be my friend. Of course. Okay. I love so, being friend. But we have check-ins, right? You have check-ins, check right? You have check-ins. Yes. That's we call them huddles, right? Oh, I like and that. And so you you'll huddle up. And so yeah. first and foremost, again, if we're talking about success, mm -hmm. right? Sustainable, repeatable mm -hmm. success, um, you should never think alone. Solo, there is no success in solo, right? And so again, people go all the way. Yeah. And they're married to it now, yeah. right? I say it's the 70% rule. Go 70% of the way, show your work. Now you're not married to it. It's why most people don't get investments. Like I get pitched every day to invest in oh, something. I'm sure, yeah. And the reality is I say no most of the time. Why? Because you're so married to what you've put. So you've gone 100% of the way there. There's no room for me to tell you, hey, based on my experience, which take a look at my LinkedIn, there's a lot. Right. Here's why you're off just a little bit, but they're married to their position. And so I can't mentor them. I can't mentor them. Okay. I feel like so many people are stuck in their life. Yes. Right. Most. And they get to a place that no matter how successful they think they are, or no matter what they're doing, the to-do list, the whole thing, that they get to a point where they're just stuck in that one spot. Yeah. Right. So someone like you, let's say I'm stuck. Let's sure. say I feel stuck. Yep. Okay. So let's say I'm doing the show right now, mm -hmm. working on a book. You know, my Angie's helping me do a lot of this stuff, right? Yeah. I have my my kids, so that's that's a thing. Okay. But I also have all these little other things that I'm I'm like bunny trailing this and this and this and this. and and I at this point, even though it all looks fancy and good and wonderful, I feel a little bit stuck right now. Sure. But I don't know how to get unstuck. Well, because you're spread too thin. That's what it is. Right. You're 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 spraying and praying. Versus I'm what? Spraying and praying. Oh my You're throwing God. a lot of stuff on the wall. Spraying hoping. and praying? Yes. Oh my gosh, I love that. that okay. Sp spraying, spraying and then praying. And praying. Spraying right. and praying. A lot of stuff on the wall That's and amazing. you're hoping that something will stick. Yeah. You're not 100% certain on what will stick. So you're guessing. You're right. Right. Well, and yeah. I'm like, no, of course you're right. <laughs> but, I, but, but let me tell you're you not you the only one. But let me tell you something. Yeah. I've done that my entire life. You learned it. I've learned you it. You learned it. Right? You gotta, you gotta remember. We have really good intentional parents who intend to do the best job they can. Mm -hmm. However, they haven't figured it out, right? So you don't know what you don't know. Be careful who fills in the blank, right? And so I do this all the time 
with, and you've heard me between parents and kids, right. they're like, you need to do this, 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 and this. And the kids, and I say kids, I mean, 20 somethings, right. Yeah. Or turn around going, I don't know, you've got a bad marriage. <laughs> you know, nothing about you're broke mom, dad, you know what you're doing. You're miserable. You're unhappy. Yeah. I don't want your life. And so the, a lot of the resistance that we have between parenthood and, and our children or our tweens or 20 somethings is because we have demonstrated we're miserable. And that's why they're not listening, wow. which they shouldn't, right? They shouldn't. Wow. And so you cannot teach what you do not know. And you have to be careful on who you listen to. I mean, yeah. listen, we're on Clubhouse. We hear it every Hello, day. And day. I go, hmm. I'm sure you <laughs> all day long. All day long. I can like, imagine you being in rooms going, no, 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 no. And a know? lot of times I have to speak up. I mean, that's yeah. why, you know, again, I wouldn't, I'm not exactly the warmest and fuzziest person. Right. But my heart is huge. Yeah. My heart is huge. I really, really care about people. I mean, I'm like, that. my whole life is a bit yeah. about people. I am probably one of the best people in simplifying complex people problems, mm -hmm. right? I've dedicated my life to this. However, a lot of the times I hear somebody say something and they don't have enough receipts behind them to understand the end result. They've got mm -hmm. great intentions, but it doesn't make sense to somebody who has studied people and progress and success and especially behavior, right? right? And so your yeah. behavior is where you're going. Right. Right. So what you think and believe, I can tell you where the finish line is for that. Wow. Now that doesn't mean that I'm perfect. Yeah. It doesn't mean that the people around me are perfect, but what it does is that we demonstrate very healthy adult relationships mm -hmm. that most people have not learned. We don't have healthy relationships with our parents. Yeah. Therefore we don't have them with our kids. Most of us don't have healthy adult relationships within our marriages, mm -hmm. right? We're just kind of it's okay. Right. It's, kind right. of, it's kind of okay. Yeah. And so okay seems okay, good enough. Right. And we settle. And we really need to take a look at what is our standards? What are our minimum standards? I'm very good at telling people what my standards are. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay if it doesn't You're work for you. You're good with boundaries. <laughs> very good at boundaries. Girl, oh, Amelia, can, boundary I, and tenetti. Listen. Yeah. I can imagine, okay, yes. I'm a filmmaker, so whenever I go yeah. see a film, yep. I'm always breaking it down. No, oh my God, they did that. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I feel like you are that, but with humans. Yeah, all So the time. you're constantly, when you're around people, are you constantly analyzing what people are saying and saying, oh my gosh, that, ooh, mm, but not saying it to them, but in your right. mind, are you constantly adjusting people without them knowing? No, I really lead with my heart. Okay. I really, really lead with my heart. And what I try to do is fill in the gap with my heart, mm -hmm. right? Saying, I know what it is that you want and I hear what you are saying and I can see your behavior. Would you like me to help you close that gap? Because mm -hmm. I like to be invited in to a conversation. I do not willingly jump into a conversation okay. I wasn't invited to because you're not listening anyway. Yeah. And I love to be able to say that if somebody isn't listening, you need to stop talking. And so if you don't invite me in, it's not my place. How did you become a behaviorist? Oh, well, so I, so I started my first company at 17 and I sold it at 19 and I've done nine since. And what I realized as I started to build bigger companies, I've had 53,000 employees, is that I couldn't compete against the big boys. I was mm. like, why would somebody come work for me? Mm. Like, what am I gonna do? What can I offer? And so I was like, well, the only way I'm really going to be able to serve people, because I, that's my core value. I believe a CEO's job is to serve the I agree, people 100%. and people then serve the customers. Yep. I don't spend any time thinking about the customers. I think about my people yeah. and I want to make their lives amazing, amazing. Good for you. And so the only way I could do that was if I understood people and mm. I needed to understand them better than they could explain it to me. Right. Cause we're hindered by our ability to communicate. Well, most people don't communicate. Right. right. So I was like, okay, how do I learn what has meaning and value to them? And then how do I bring it to them? We as a society can never forget you are living somebody's dream life. You are living wow. somebody's dream. And if you're not grateful for the dream life that you have, because I don't care how yucky you think it is, there's somebody going, I wish I had children. I feel like you're talking directly I, to me right now. Oh my God. No, but it is. But but it is, right? Yeah. And we take it for granted. Yeah. And what happens is what we do not recognize and celebrate, we lose. Mm. We lose. Ooh, let's take a minute. <laughs> Say that one more time. What we do not recognize and celebrate in our life, we lose. Wow. So if you have health, be grateful. Mm. If you are snuggle bunning with somebody, 
be grateful. If you have a relationship with your kids, be, if you even have kids, be yeah. grateful, right? If you have a roof over your house, be grateful, yeah. right? You have to be grateful. That's why the gratitude journal is so important. It is. Your morning routine and your evening routine are the bookends of your life. It happens to be that your mind remembers what you do in the beginning and what you do at the end. It doesn't remember the middle. So the gratitude journal, explain that for those that don't really, understand that. It is, it is holding space to the things that you don't want to lose. That's what it is. If you don't want to lose it, acknowledge it. Okay. Right? So I start this morning going, I woke up. Thank you. Cause I I'd like up. to do that again tomorrow. <laughs> okay. And, uh, one more day, please. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I thank for my kids. I thank for the people in my life. I mean, I, you've been in my gratitude. I just, I Aww, love and adore you. I, lo you. I love, you've I got such same. a talent. Right. And so I go through the people and the things that, that are in my life that I want to keep. Yeah. And I know that if I don't acknowledge them, I'm at risk at losing it. And I don't want to do that. What do you think about people pleasers? So people pleasers, I think they're misunderstood. Mm. Okay. And uh, somebody who's a people ple pleaser is actually screaming for help. See me, recognize me, please tell me I'm okay. And that's why they people please. They are looking for outside validation for somebody just to tell them that they're okay. Mm. And so when somebody starts to people please you, just stop and just say, you're okay. I love you just as you are. You don't have to do a thing for me. That's so good. Yeah. That's yeah. so good. I yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, just give it up for Amelia. Come on. I mean, this is so beautiful. You said you helped me with something recently, oh, you know. Yeah. Um, we were on Clubhouse and Breakfast with Champions, and I asked a question on stage, and we were talking about my girls because, yeah. you know, I have two teenage daughters who are absolutely beautiful. I love my girls so much, but every once in a while, we have we have some situations, you know, mm -hmm. I have a 17 year old that's going to be 18, mm -hmm. you know, she's just turning 17 actually. And I have a 15 year old and it's not always easy as no. you, you know, you know, hormones and you have a teenager as well. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing about parenthood. That's easy. Girl. I mean, the fine print is especially with hang teenagers. on tight. Okay. This is going to be a ride. Yeah. No, this is me. This is me <laughs> holding on tight. Yeah. And you said something. Cause I said, you know, I want to have a better relationship with my kids as they're getting older. What do I need to have a better relationship? Do you remember what you said? Oh, yeah. Can you say it? Because it was beautiful. Yeah. Stop being a parent. Stop being a parent. Stop being a parent. If your kids wow. are over that, like, 12, 13, 14, if they're right around that age, you need to understand behaviorally where they are is to push back. And you know that's going to be hard when, pe when people hear oh, this. They're going to be like, oh, what do you mean stop being a parent? Let, Explain oh, that part, oh, right? Yeah. I get it in my DMs. Yeah, yeah. I, I oh, get I'm some sure. very fierce things, right? And what I mean by that is you have to understand that there is a trajectory of healthy uh, growth mm -hmm. as you move through the different phases of behavior and, right. and self-awareness and all that stuff. And so that is the age where they start to break away from parent to decide what is their identity. Wow. So the resistance that you feel is confirmation for you that they're exactly where they need to be. Oh, wow. And so the only way now to continue that connection is to stop being the disciplinary parent, right, wrong, heaven, hell, good, bad. Right. That's gone. And instead become a mentor, a mentor, be a mentor and that. really lean into your kids with language that says, interesting, tell me more about how you made that decision. Mm. What did you consider? Have you considered something? Would you like to hear something more from me? Whatever you really want to move into the mentoring yeah. language, because if you haven't done the parenting yeah. by the time they're 12 to 14, you can't go backwards. Well, let me tell you what happened when you did that. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So that day I call, I texted my girls and I said, Hey girls, I want to talk to you tonight at dinner because something mm -hmm. happened today. And they're like, what mom? And I go, no, I want to talk at dinner. So I cooked a nice dinner. This really happened. You can ask my girls. I wish they were here right now. And we sat at dinner and I said, I was on clubhouse, you know, cause they know I'm always on clubhouse. <laughs> and I was talking to Amelia and she said that because you guys are getting older, that I should go from being that disciplinary mom, mom, mom. Cause I am a little bit hovering mom. You know, I've always kind of been that way. My girls don't like it. And to go more into being like a mentor towards you. And Stevie, my younger girl, who's 15, she goes, I like that mom. Mm. And ever since then, things have, I feel like I'm going to get emotional right now. <sighs> I think I am too. <laughs> <laughs> ever since then, I feel like my daughters and I see each other now in a different way. Yeah. And that was one day on Clubhouse and you just saying that one thing that made everything change with my girls. It's why I am so passionate about people understanding behavior. Yeah. Here's the other beautiful thing about that. <sighs> your children, because they happen to be girls. Yeah. Your children will never learn how to be a woman unless you're a mentor. They can't learn that from <sighs> a parent. Wow. 
because you have a beautiful teenage girl too. I do. And I, do. I feel like that's something that you and I kind of relate to, you know, having yeah. teenage daughters, because yeah. it is a very difficult thing, not just for us, but for them. You know, the whole thing, I mean, I have a, a son and a daughter. Um, and I will tell you that what I needed to do within self to be that mentor for them was so different between my son versus my daughter. Mm. And the work is always within. The journey to anything is within. I know that people think it's outside of themselves. Right. They want money and they want houses and they cars and vacations and these crazy relationships and all this stuff. And they think that it's out there. And I promise you it's in here. It's in here. It's and so in. anytime I, I mean, that's one of the things I love about Clubhouse is, um, and I hope this is not my ego and I'm sure people will tell me if it is. I actually think I'm helping. You are helping. I really think that I'm helping. Hello. Right. And so it's no, people spend so much. And again, I love therapists. Everybody should yeah, have a therapist. Absolutely. But people need immediate relief. Yeah. They need an immediate answer. I and agree. I tell people that I can move you in the right direction in less than 11 minutes. I've heard you say mm -hmm. that. And I was actually, I just got chills, mm -hmm. but I was actually just going to say that, mm -hmm. that you mentioned that on Clubhouse mm -hmm. and I wanted to go there yeah. because I went three and a half years with my therapist and she did help me with my trauma and my mm -hmm. stuff. But with the, with my daughter, she never said anything like that to me. They can't. Okay. First of all, understand okay. I am not a therapist. Okay. And so I do not have to adhere to a lot of the rules and the regulations that depending what kind of therapist you have or psychiatrist, like that's a different world. Right. Right. I went into learning and studying and human behavior because I wanted to be the CEO that created an environment that people had bliss. Gary V. I know says Gary. The same. And I love I Gary. Love I him. love Gary. Because he has a whole video talking about Unless you're making as, unless your employee is making as much money as you, don't expect them to work as hard as you. Your employee is there helping you. Yes. So you yes. should be serving them. The Gallup yeah. poll and um, the Kenzie report yeah. just came out within the last like four weeks. 79% of people said they are not engaged at work and they're consciously wow. not engaged. It is a $7.9 trillion Ooh. problem for businesses, and they're still using antiquate. It, our onboarding system sucks. Onboarding, welcome to the job. Hope you figure it out. Get started. It's true. It makes right. no sense. It, right. ma it makes no sense. And so I came out of retirement because I do. I follow Gary. I know Gary. We both live in New York. Yeah, I'm a him. big fan. <laughs> I love Claude Silver. We love you, Gary. We absolutely do. <laughs> Come and, on my show, and I was please. Like, and I'm a tech geek, right? Yeah. So I'm a tech data junkie, weird kind of yeah. girl. And I was like, you know what? People have been my passion. Tech is kind of my jam. Yeah. I was like, I really feel like I have to come out of retirement and I need to solve the people problem. I have to come. Now, there's not a lot of people that are happy that I'm right. here. Okay. Let me just say <laughs> that. Wait, why though? Because we're in the biggest shift of power, mm. right? It used to be 20 years ago, you had to get a job. That's what you do. You had to do a job. You had right. to just do what the company said. We basically, from stockholder down, that's how, that's how it was driven, right? You would drive stockholder value. Right. Now, people have the power. That's right. But we don't have the systems and the tools that allow people to have the power. Right. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to do that handshake between what people need, mm -hmm. drive value for people based on people, and also drive the value in order for the company to stay alive. See, the company still has to stay alive. Right. And to marry that together. And that is what's missing, is that marriage between the two, because we don't have those systems. So is that what Designing Genius is about? Mm -hmm. Let us know a little bit about Designing Genius and how people can get involved. So Designing Genius is a people operating system, how people operate within your tactical planning. And it goes everything from what your first hire needs to be, but more importantly, it allows a person to very, very quickly identify what has value in meaning to you and why, where is it rooted? And when people go through this process, cause I get it every single day, they go through designing genius and they're like, Whoa, right. here's my five areas of focus. And I realize that I've been focusing on this for my entire life. Mm -hmm. And it's really my dad. It's my mother. It's mm -hmm. my first teacher. It's not mine. Right. right. We focus on the thing that somebody else told us we need to put value on. Wow. And I wanted to unwind it. It's why people get stuck, right. right? If you're stuck and you're not moving forward, the chances are because you're trying to drive somebody else's initiative and it's not yours. Okay. One, give me a second here. <laughs> because here's why. Because as you're saying that right now, I'm thinking about my parents 
Mm -hmm. and how my whole life was my parents' life and how they wanted me to fit into their life and never really kind of pushed me out and said, go do what you feel you're supposed to do. Because they were afraid. They were afraid. They were afraid. And so many parents do that, though. Yeah. Especially, Good intention. But let me say this, especially in certain cultures. Oh, like, like, okay, Italian. I, I, I know, but listen, in my community, it's the Asian and the Indian culture. They're very like, you have to be this, you have to, like, Jay Shetty is a perfect example of that, right? Yeah, I love Jay. I love Jay. I studied yeah, under I him for it. a year. And I but really like his wife. I love her too. She's, oh. They look like brother and sister, by they the way. Do. But, but anyway, she, I love gorgeous. him, but I really, I really love, love her. her. I, I her really too. love her. She's amazing. Yeah. But, yeah. but his parents were like, I want you to be a doctor. I want you to be a, you know, a doctor, a lawyer, MBA. And a BA. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. he was like, I want to be a monk. Yeah. Good for him that he yeah. jumped out there. But yeah. not a lot of kids yeah. or teenagers could say, or because they're afraid that they're going to hurt their parents' feelings or their parents are going to disown them. Or ostracize. Or ostracize. And yeah. their parents use the money, the bank account. Mm -hmm. With the intention that they want them to be safe. You got to remember, as parents, we're doing what we think they need in mm. order to get to the other side. And we tell us that story. We tell ourselves this story that I'm doing what's right for you so that you're safe and you're secure and that right. you can live this life. What we don't understand as parents is there's been a shift. Right. See, if you're... If you're over the age of 40, you believe in assets, mm. right? You believe I'm going to acquire a lot of assets and those assets are how I'm going to generate wealth. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. That's kind of the thing. Yeah. But if you're under the age of 40, you don't believe in assets. They don't want to own houses. They don't want to own cars. They don't, they don't want a 401k. What do they want? Experiences. Mm. They want to live experiences now because they have witnessed their parents most of them, right? Try to work as a couple to try to get the house. They see the burden of the debt. They see that they can't ever do a thing. They've been oh lived gosh, with, we can't afford it. Yeah. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. So the kids are like, well, if we can't afford anything and you're miserable, then why wouldn't I just have the experience why I'm young? Right. Why do I want to follow that trend? We yeah. have to understand what young people are looking for. Absolutely. I love all of, for, first of all, I, I wish that we had a whole hour, two hours to be, right, Me Angie, too. don't you, don't you guys think, I, I would love to just keep going, you know, but I'm getting, I'm getting the five minute signal. So we're going to okay. start to wind down. Okay. If someone is listening right now and they're like, who is this woman? I want, we want to hire her. Like, how do people find you? to Designinggenius.com. Perfect. Design, and we'll have that as a lower right. third as well. And so there's a book. The book will be out in just a couple of weeks. Amazing. And so Designing Genius is for any, if you have a pulse, it's for you so that you can understand really, really, really quickly what has meaning and value to you. Yeah. There's a game at the end of every Yay. chapter. So if you play the game, remember what you know, you cannot know. Yeah. If you play the game, every chapter is really going to show you your mirror so you can understand it. That's great. And then for people who want um, me to come into their team to actually be able to show you what's going on and quickly solve the problems. Again, I tell people I can do it in a matter of minutes. So give me your people problems. And I go into team meetings. I go into masterminds and put in a people operating system. So we put in the people plan. Yeah. Uh, I do, do you do phone calls? Like if yeah. people want to call you? Yeah. You do like yeah. sessions? Yeah, yeah. All the time. Oh my yeah. God. I never knew I needed a behaviorist. <laughs> but yeah. I know now I need a behaviorist. And I'm glad that you and I are friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Join us on Clubhouse. We do great rooms. Join us on Clubhouse. If you guys are on Clubhouse, which a lot of you guys are that watch this show, she, you're on on Fridays. I'm on every Friday at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Eastern, a. Eastern yeah. time, and, and I love on, to, I love, I love to buddy into your show. I know, and I love it. And I'm on on Tuesdays on Breakfast with Champions at 9 a.m. My time, PST time. But every once in a while, like, let's do a couple I, things together. I would together. love to. I would love All right, to. We're gonna start doing some stuff together on my on my hour because it's just me. No, so I love it. On, no, okay, no, absolutely. Right, done done and done. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I love you. I and love you too. This was for me. I love deep thinking and I love being on a couch with deep thinkers yeah. because it makes me go, oh, yeah, 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 I get that. Oh, yeah, I get that. Do you ever feel like, and we're, we're going to end now. We got to end. We got to end the show. Yeah. But do you ever feel like you're just on an, uh, like in, on, the, on an island or in the wilderness, as Brene Brown says, you know, braving the wilderness? Do you ever feel like you're in the wilderness and not a lot of people understand you? Oh, I've never, I've always been a misfit island. I've always been misfit. Oh, yeah. So I only know to be a misfit. And by the way, I love Brene Brown. I love her. But, you know, like, I, I love your talent. I really, like, I want to do a pajama party. Oh. I want to do a pajama party. What does and that mean? I want to bring women together to show them how immediately they can change can't, their life. I, I, right? I have the cutest pajamas, and if I don't, I'm going to buy new ones. really cool drinks. And I yes. want to go bring whatever problem you think you have. And I promise you, by the morning, it will be solved. Okay. I'm in. So I'm I'm number one. Yeah, no, so let's I, do it. I'm in. I want you I, to produce it. Like you're I'll so, produce you're it. You're so you have that. You've got like I'm rough. You're so feminine and cute <laughs> and charming. And I, I have my moments. Yes. Yeah. This time next year, 
You're going to see more Sally on me. Aww, more that's Sally. so sweet of you yes. to say that. Oh, my God. Are you every people love you. They love you. Oh, my God. Yeah, Amelia. you're so, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. You're, you're going to make me cry. No, 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 no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have more of you. But I do. I think we should have a slumber oh, party. I, I want to 100%. And, and I have my moments, trust me, that I would love to talk to you about that I feel like I need to process through. And I'm so excited no, right I now because so I feel like even through this interview that, that I've transformed a little bit. Oh. You just have that magic about you. Well, I just do one thing and one thing well, you know, and you do your thing and I learn from you and you learn from, we wow. grow together. Yeah. It's never single. We grow together. I grew, you grew, yeah. we go together. But I love you and I, I you. appreciate this time so much. I, I feel happy in my soul just thank being you. on this couch you, with you. you. And, and kisses to your girls. Thank you. And thank you for watching on Amazon Live. And we will see you next time on Welcome to My Clubhouse.